Do you know what day today is? Yeah, I know it's Thursday, but do you know the date of today? It's December, you got that right. Good, good, we are close. We are in 2023, that's important, but yes. And what else? It's the 21st. And you know what the importance is of December 21st? Winter solstice. That's right. That's right. The winter solstice is when we are having the shortest day in the year. That means from tomorrow on, every single day, we are gaining like a minute of daylight. And if that's not a wonderful thing, then I don't know what is. But winter solstice is another date. I mean, there's another thing about winter solstice or about December 21st. And that is, today is the very first day of winter. Yes, you heard that word. I know, it's a very ugly word. It means cold and it means perhaps snowy. And depending on the region in the world, perhaps it's just cold and very rainy. Maybe it's summertime in Australia. I don't, got no idea. Right? They do things differently down under. So today, 21st of December, winter solstice, first day of winter. And I'm sitting here just in a sweater. It's not actually that bad out. Actually, it's probably in the upper 30s, lower 40s. But it's it's a beautiful day. It's, uh, the sun is out, clear sky. That doesn't actually mean anything as far as temperature is concerned. Not like in the summertime, perhaps. Uh, but it is nice. Having a little bit of blue sky, or a lot of blue sky, rather, does brighten your day. It does kind of lift your mood up a little bit. Just a tiny little bit, you know. Otherwise, you're just gonna be in the winter blues. You know, it's gray, it's miserable, it's cold, and yeah, you 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 just unhappy all day, every day. But the moment you have a nice sunny day, ah, just like a sigh of relief. Life goes on. It's not all doom and gloom. So whatever you might be experiencing in your life that you consider doom and gloom, that it just never wants to end. Take a moment to enjoy the beauty of a clear sky with the sun out and consider that there is brighter, better days ahead. Because there's always brighter, better days ahead. We don't know when exactly, but they are ahead. There's also brighter days behind. There's also gloomy days ahead. There's brighter days ahead, right? Let's just stick with that, right? So take that moment, look at the sun and the blue sky and say like, you know what? In just three more months, we're having spring. The suffering of the cold weather is going to be over in just 90 days. I can do this. And because of that, we're going to be doing a few little things today. One is we're going to be cooking together. And another thing is, I'm going to show you my collection of holiday sweets. What do you think? Should we get into it? Ah, right, here we are. This is Christmas candy and chocolates. Everything uh, just for this holiday, really. Um, mostly everything that you see here is just for the holiday. So here in the background, obviously, we have a advanced calendar. Uh, 21 doors have been opened already. Uh, there's little chocolates inside. Then here we are having a Chocolate Santa Claus wrapped up in foil, all pretty, with a couple of uh, bells and uh, I guess Christmas eggs or balls, you could say. In the background, we have these cookies. Uh, some of them, no, they're glazed, either sugar glazed or sugar chocolate glazed. 
soft gingerbread cookies they are. And here we're having a all chocolate chocolate Santa Claus. Definitely so far everything just Christmas related. Then the chocolate dominoes. I'm not sure if they sell them any other time too, but these are most certainly very popular for Christmas. And then we have marzipan, Lübecker marzipan. It's, um, in Germany, marzipan is a big thing. And then we're having these two over here. Um, it's also called, uh, it's also marzipan. Um, there's two different ones. This is marzipan brot. I guess there's a cake filling inside. And this one is called Baumstamm Nougat. This one, they used to make them bigger. This used to be my all time favorite. I go nuts for this one. And then we're having our gold coins over here. I guess they are for good luck. I'm not sure if they're really just for Christmas or if they are for New Year's already. Um, some of them may be filled with a chewy caramel kind of thingy or they might be filled with chocolate. There might be a hit or miss. And then here we're having just all time favorites, Milka chocolate, I like white chocolate, so this is what I picked out. And we've got the British Sport chocolate. This one has marzipan filling as well. So this is a standard collection of Christmas goodies that you find in kids' stockings on uh, St. Nicholas Day, or that you would find in, in or around the, the Christmas tree. And most of these can be purchased even here in the US. Now, different stores carry different products. The majority of this I bought from Aldi. Yes, I said it, Aldi. Aldi and Trader Joe's are owned by two brothers and they are actually German. So those is the Aldi and Trader Joe's are German companies. And naturally they would carry at least a few German products. And um, you know, Christmas season is one of those. Uh, one, one funny story about Aldi actually, I'm not promoting this store, it's just like my experience with it. So when I was a kid back in the, God, this was the 80s, Aldi for Christmas was doing specials um, non-food related specials so they were selling presents they have like in the middle of the aisle still where they have certain items but back in the 80s that is where my family bought for me for I guess Christmas my very first computer yes I, my very first computer was bought at Aldi in the 1980s just think about that mind-boggling right it was a Commodore 64 and I had the computer for many, many years. As a matter of fact, I just a few years back, um, how many years ago was that? I don't remember. But a, a few years back, maybe, maybe five to 10 years back, I actually bought from a friend of mine, his old Commodore 64. And I have everything but the screen, with the floppy disk, the whole nine yards. I got everything and the thing still works. So I've got it in storage right now. But uh, one day I'm gonna break that out and play all my old favorite games. Anyway, back to the uh, back to the chocolates. So yeah, this this is a spread, um, which is a little bit different from what you find in standard American supermarkets, which simply have just boring traditional candy. This is actually made just for the holiday instead of just a wrapper. A little more excitement in here. At least that's what I think. Uh, yeah. Now. As you might know, I'm on the carnivore diet, which means all of this is off limits. Ooh, that's a bummer. So what am I gonna do with all these sweets and not being able to eat them? I think I'm gonna put them into a small basket and just give them away because, do you, any, do you know how many calories and carbohydrates are sitting here? I mean, I, I would enjoy every single one of these, right? I could probably also finish this in a day. Hmm, that, that's, that's a thought. But yeah, so that is, that is the Christmas chocolates or ch Christmas 
uh, candy collection. Uh, this is what you would find on a traditional German child's environment. And uh, delicious stuff, not always cheap. Do I have some price tags? Let me see. The marzipan log over here, $6.99. This one, no price tag. I guess so it's free. This chocolate guy over here, eight ninety five. I don't think I don't think Aldi puts price tags onto their 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 candy collection, uh, but it it wasn't outrageous. It wasn't outrageous at all, and uh, you know, so this is this is it. Delicious. You always need a good amount of butter. No matter what you do, butter makes life better. You've got to remember that. Butter makes life better. That's why it's BB. <laughs> so we're just having our standard 80-20 ground beef over here. Now we're adding some salt to it. And we're adding some ground pepper to it. And just let it cook. One big advantage of cooking inside of a van is when you are cooking, you don't need heat. Because you're creating a lot of heat, right? So if you, if you live in, an, in a van or an RV or something, Cook your own food. Fire. Create your own heat. This is heat doing double duty. It's cooking my food and it's making me warm. As a matter of fact, it's making me so warm, I would want to open up the window. <laughs> so with ground beef, we have learned when we make it in a frying pan and we don't have a spatula, because we don't want to dirty a spatula, We've learned that we don't want to break up the beef too much because if it gets too small, you can't flip it. But bigger pieces you can flip. They still have a little bit of, you know, structure to them if you want. Okay, the beef is done. Oh, look at that. That's a good pile of meat right there. All the juices out there too. Wipe it off. Wipe the frying pan dry because it works better that way. Take another good chunk of butter. Oh yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. There we go. And stick it right in there. Pork chop. And another pork chop. So we seasoned the side that we put down, but now we also want to season the side that is not put down. And because this is the first batch, I have another batch like this coming. I'm going light on the pepper, even though I do like a lot of pepper. Too much pepper in the frying pan burns. So if you make multiple batches, you either have to switch out your, 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 your grease, you know, clean up your frying pan, or you have to uh, take it easy on the first batch. Okay. All right. Cooking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> This is good.
quick tip when it comes to plates. When you just go picnicking and you have cold food, most paper plates are wonderful. But when you have hot, hot food like this right from the grill, and if you have something with liquid and grease like this, these plates are getting soggy. This is already getting soggy on the bottom. So you might have to spend the extra money on a better plate. Uh, you know, these plates are not good for this kind of food. Of course, you could always buy a regular plate, but then you have to wash it. So depending on your circumstances or scenario that you're in for any given moment, make sure you have paper plates available too, when you don't have access to water and whatever. And, uh, you know, get the good one. And I think it's time to flip. There you go. Okay, first set of pork chops on the plate. Fresh butter in the pan. And the second set of pork chops. Right in the pan. A little bit of extras. And now we're doing heavy pepper. Because this is the last batch. He wants us heavily peppered. There we go. Alrighty, let it cook. Let it cook, let it cook, let it cook. And how's my first set of pork chops? It's hot. It is hot. Sorry, you can't see it because I can't point the camera at it that easily. But here's a nice piece. Mm -mm. Mm. Mm -mm. This is good. You know, maybe it's a German in me, but I kind of prefer pork over beef. Pork chop over steak, kind of all day every day. Nowadays pork is considered the other white meat because it's grown so fast there. They don't really have the same flavor profile that they used to have. Pork nowadays is very mild and it used to be much stronger tasting. And I think I would have preferred the old ways. Yeah, still a little pink in there. Right by the bone, but doesn't matter. Still delicious. There's no question about it. Glasses. Oh, oh, now I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> there you go. Ground beef and pork chops, the proper carnivore meal, and butter, of course. No meal is complete without butter. I think I've got to flip my my chops over here, so one and two, squish them around a little bit. Ooh, delicious, delicious, delicious. All right, let's turn the heat off, uh, off and flame off. And then you're just gonna scoop them up and put them on the Plate. There you go. And then here we put some of the grease right on there. Mm -hmm. 
And here we have them. Two beautiful little shops. Yum.